We're following dramatic new developments, though, surrounding a high-profile investigation into former President Donald Trump. Manhattan's district attorney has convened a special grand jury to weigh potential charges against Trump, his business executives, family members, or the top organization itself, the Trump organization itself. They're looking into possible crimes surrounding his tax returns, alleged hush money payments to women, and other business dealings from before the time that he was president. Uh, the former president slammed the move, of course, calling it, quote, purely political. That's being driven by highly partisan Democrat prosecutors. So for more on this, let us bring in CBS News legal analyst Ricky Kleeman. All right, Ricky. So how significant are these latest developments and what can you tell us about this particular special grand jury? How is it different? The developments are significant indeed. Uh, Side Vance, the district attorney in Manhattan, has been investigating the Trump organization for about two years. He has had a big team. They not only concerned prosecutors, it also had forensic accountants and experts in the world of financial crimes. For Side Vance to take this step and convene a special grand jury, that means that there is a likelihood, though not a certainty, of an indictment. It could be against the Trump Organization, could be against any of the principals, which include, of course, the former president, as well as members of his family, and other people who were high up in the organization, including a man by the name of Alan Weisselberg, and we should get back to him in a minute. The reason we call it a special grand jury, Anne-Marie, is that it is impaneled specifically for the purpose of reviewing all these millions, literally millions of documents that the district attorney's office has sifted through. They are going to meet for six months. They are going to meet three days a week in order to decide as they investigate if there is an indictment in the office. Um, so we mentioned uh, prosecutors were looking into Trump's financial and business dealings um, from before the time he was president. So what's the main focus of the investigation? What possible crimes are prosecutors looking into? One would think that the prosecutors are looking into the crimes of bank fraud, insurance fraud, tax fraud. Where this all began, Anne-Marie, as we may all recall, for those of us who were watching the hearings when Michael Cohen testified some time ago, Michael Cohen said in Congress that what Donald Trump and the organization used to do was they used to inflate values in order to obtain loans. They used to deflate values of exactly the same properties in order to assess their own tax liability. The reason I mentioned before Alan Weisselberg, as I say Alan Weisselberg is the linchpin. He has the keys to the kingdom. Why? He was the treasurer. He was the CFO. There is no financial transaction that took place for the Trump Organization, the Trump Charitable Foundation, the Trumps themselves, that Alan Weisselberg not only signed the checks, but he got the instructions about what to do with the money. So I would think that Alan Weisselberg is initially a target that the district attorney's office would like to get cooperating so he could become a witness against other people. He's really the case. Yeah, and we, you know, we covered uh, the story where prosecutors were sort of looking into um, tuition payments for his grandkids in a very expensive private school and whether or not that was uh, hiding compensation for him. So he may um, be motivated to use a non-legal term to cover his own butt in this case. Well, it, it always becomes uh, an issue for someone when the government can mm -hmm. leverage your own family against you. So it's not only your own liability, but if they say that they may want to go after other members of your family, but if you cooperate, we're not going to do that. So Alan Weisselberg, at least on what we know today, which certainly is not a lot, but what we do know would make one think who has followed this case that he has a great deal of motivation 
to testify against other people in order to keep himself and his family out of further legal jeopardy. Mm -hmm. So what about the former president's business moving forward, though? How could this all impact uh, President Trump's businesses? I think, you know, he's in the hospitality industry, he's in the real estate industry, um, uh, commercial real estate in particular. Both of those industries really took a pretty hard hit over the last year. Could this be a problem for him moving forward? There's always the possibility of problems when you're under investigation or your organization is under investigation. At the same time, we know that Donald Trump has hired a number of great lawyers and then some not so great lawyers in the past. But he has hired always aggressive lawyers. And those lawyers will go forward. And if, in fact, there is something that comes out of this, that is an indictment against the organization or against any of its principles, that he will defend vigorously. I do not expect him to take this, as they say, lying down. At the same time, the businesses can continue to function. There is no reason for any of the businesses to stop functioning. However, Amory, as we well know, when you're in the hospitality business, you need to attract clients. You need to attract consumers. But we have to remember that the country was pretty split in the last election and that President Trump, at least to date, has control or influences control over much of the Republican Party. And I'm sure there are lots of people who will be very happy to continue to stay at his resorts or other businesses. Um, so we will look at that part of it as a scenario that will unfold over time. This grand jury can sit for all of the six months or part of it. This grand jury has the ability to return any indictments if they believe that there is a crime that has been committed and there is probable cause. And they could return indictments at any time. They don't have to wait for the entire six months to pass. Um, Ricky, also want to ask you uh, about a uh, former President Trump claiming that he has, quote, absolute immunity from a lawsuit filed by Congressman Eric Swalwell. Now, he's accusing Trump of inciting the January 6th insurrection in a nearly 50 page court filing. Uh, Trump urged a federal judge to dismiss the lawsuit. Um, so, you know, he was impeached on this. So the lawsuit is sort of curious. But um, does he actually have absolute immunity here? Well, let's remember, he was impeached, but he was not convicted. We also have to remember yeah. that he has uh, used this uh, absolute immunity defense in various court cases as they have come up, including his fight against District Attorney Cy Vance about getting his tax records. Let me make this clear. There is no such defense of absolute immunity for a president of the United States. It does not exist as a defense. In addition to the fact that these particular uh, incidents or this particular group of activities that the grand jury is investigating go back before he was president. So the idea that he has absolute immunity in the grand jury sense for an indictment, not at all, in terms of the Eric Swalwell uh, lawsuit, absolute immunity, you can throw that out the window because he is going to have to defend on that suit if the suit can pass a variety of motions to dismiss, which I assume will be filed. The courts have made it really clear. I mean, he does not have the ability to shoot someone on Fifth Avenue. And I say that because this is a <laughs> phrase that the former president has used. If he were to have done anything um, that was criminal in nature of any kind, that, of course, he could be prosecuted and he could be sued. So that lawsuit, I expect to proceed. Right. Uh, may, he said that he wouldn't lose any supporters, but uh, that doesn't mean that he wouldn't lose a court case. Um, <laughs> Ricky, thank you so much. Well said, Anne-Marie. Thanks so much to you.